I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just kidding. I'm Zachary Fowler, winner of Alone Season 3, and you're watching what is normally called Jamie and I React to Alone Season 4, Episode, this time, 7. But Jamie's in England off petting sheep and uh, rubbing her face against everything wool she can find. And so I am here alone with the kids in bed, and I'm going to watch uh, the Alone Season 4, Episode... Um, episode 7 but uh, instead of sitting here commentating on it because it's not Jamie and I hanging out I'm gonna watch this whole thing in about 10 seconds and then I'm gonna teleport up on out of here all the way as you can see right now it's dark out all the way into tomorrow and I'll tell you what I think of the whole episode so here we go this episode has been brought to you by FowlersMakeRealMischief.com t-shirts, slingshots, shovels, and the new survival bracelets from Wazoo and Fowler Orange, linked below and at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna teleport on up out of here all the way into tomorrow, and we'll talk about it in a new undisclosed location. Alone, season four, episode seven now. Man, it's going so fast, it's going so fast. Wild though, Brooke and her husband. That was pretty cool, that shelter is killer. I love that. Uh, it's so funny though, that uh, that teepee she built for the for like the chimney. My first thought was like, at the end of the episode, I was like, man, that, that seems a little on the dangerous side. I know, you know, that seems a little, uh, uh, risky and then she and then right in the trailer at the end for next week's episode she comes running out and oh no it's it's caught fire but um it looks like they had it under control by the time they found out it was burning so it, it, it's a balance all the time of you know what is safe and what's going to keep you warm and keep you staying there you know if the shelter burns down you're going home or you have to start all over and you might not have the energy to do that. You know, it's so important to be able to come in in the evening and rest and be able to have a, be able to step outside of the extremeness of the situation. You know, that's what made it possible for me to be, be out there, I think, that long, you know? And, and I think the uh, others would say the same, you know? Um, Carly, you know, she had that beautiful shelter, a lot like mine and uh, was able to be comfortable inside and it means the world to you when everything is so always so much work out there you know and you're always in the elements but to be able to come inside and be able to rest so i thought it was pretty neat that my prediction that finding food for two people might be a harder thing is being played out on both sides of that this time with sam and his dad his dad catching fish sam not catching any and keeping being able to keep Sam energized with food because his dad is catching some, so the two-person thing works out to their benefit there. But then we see um, Jim and Ted's excellent adventure, and they caught a whole bunch of fish, one of them caught a whole bunch of fish, and they were able to eat them, and now they're all gone, and now the both of them are, are, are hungry because they don't have enough food. But if it was just one person that had caught that and he didn't have to share it with his brother, then that could have been twice as many days worth of food and he wouldn't, they wouldn't feel so starving. So it's like, it's just one of those things. It's like, it's either gonna work out in your favor or it's gonna go real bad for you, I think. I, I, my earliest predictions, are, are, I find, are, I think are coming true, you know? It's just not enough food to go around between two people. And it, I, I don't know how that's gonna play out for them, but it's, in the, I think in the majority of the cases, it's not gonna play out well for these groups. That they're just not gonna be able to get enough food for two people. I man, I love Jim and Ted's boat. That turned out so nice. He did such a good job putting all those little like uh, stringers in the bottom that reinforce it and allowing it to uh, have them somewhere to sit on or to kneel on. Uh, it looks a little unstable and it's not working out for them as far as being able to get into another location and fish. I don't know what they could do better there. I mean, they're doing their best. I don't see any, uh, I, I never put all my effort into building a boat because I didn't see that there was any benefit. I felt like 
myself. The best fishing was going to be right where I was, right along there. And I saw a, lot, saw a lot of fish rising out further on and splashing around. That's why I made the duck hunter and got out there and I caught some of them. But it, it, there, I didn't see any benefit of making a boat and traveling all around. Almost every episode, somebody pulled a fish in their fish line out of the water with the fish on it, the fish shakes and comes free. Now, all, not all fish are hooked all that well. And they're maybe not hooked through a piece of cartilage or the upper jaw, lower jaw, somewhere that's really great. And I think just as important as catching a fish is an important landing strategy. Now all these guys have little bits of net they've found and they have line or you know a secondary pair of trousers or, or long johns or whatever they were allowed to bring with their clothes. A landing net might be one of the most important things. I think that landing net is going to be one of the things that I get on to next time. I lost two fish when I was in Patagonia. One at the beginning and I was like I'll never lift my line out of the water. Always drag the fish across the top of the water. If he fights really hard kind of give him some slack just like you would on a regular pole and then try and pull him in as he calms down you slide him in across the the water top and then onto the beach so that you never risk the chance of him shaking the way they do when you pull him out of the water and losing him. So a landing strategy is definitely going to be a strategy that means you get more food, you know. Wow! What is going on? What the heck? Alright, so we're talking about the show and how people have been, and I'm just thinking to myself, people are just saying it's impossible these ducks are wandering up or they're finding ducks that are half dead and here I am filming the video and here's a cormorant that can barely get himself out of the water. He does not look so good. All right. Well, that was completely random and and goes kind of like with what we've been talking about the show here. Oh, it's not completely out of the realm of possibilities. I think animals, you know, you're around enough animals, you spend enough time outdoors, animals burn themselves out and end up passing out or showing up exhausted in front of you and uh, free lunch, you know, just like the one that showed up in the fire and the one that broke found on the beach and oh, he just fell over again. It's not doing so good. Now something will come along and eat him. Circle of life and all that. So we see the hunger and tiredness strike again on Jim and Ted there, setting their multi-hook line out, catching himself on the finger. I don't know what you could have done differently. I had a day like that, you know, you're hungry, you're tired, you gotta keep going forward, you gotta keep trying whatever you possibly can to catch more food. You know, I got it right here. And I was around day 76 or something like that. See that big old negative mark right there? That was my only day I accomplished actually next to nothing, I, negative. A little man tripping, that's how I physically felt and emotionally it was just a plain old big old negative day. And it was the only one that, I, that turned out like that for me. And that's when I reset my, my thinking about everything. And, uh, and it start, things started picking up. But um, I did what they did though, instead of lines with multiple hooks. Uh, the, the thing I did differently is I put it, I had that 18 foot long bamboo. And I was able to take that 18 foot long bamboo and put an 18 foot long 50 pound test. And then from that attach uh, five different hooks baited with a big rock at the end. And the bamboo allowed me to sling it out there you know, and set it, and I caught me a good number of fish on it. So that was a great episode. The teaser for next week episode looks amazing. I can't wait to see what happens with these guys. They all look like they're doing, uh, struggling in some ways and doing really well in other ways. And, and the bushcrafting stuff they're pulling out is amazing. This is really turning out to be a great season as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I, I look forward to next week's. Thanks for watching. Fowler out. Oh, there he goes. He seems to be doing solid enough now that he's back in the water. I, I, I don't know what his deal was. Bye-bye.